I know you may not like this, folks, but put simply, Gunther Steiner needs to go. Wait, phone calls? Rockstars? Gene, Lord Gene! I am aware that the Haas team principal, Gunther Steiner, has a very significant presence within the F1 social media sphere and that he has done everything in his power to capitalize on that and save his bacon. As far as I can see it, Gunther is really not bringing anything new to the table with Haas, coasting off at the back of his own fame and not trying anything new. Much like their over-reliance on safety cars towards the end of the race, they like to Haas just wait out the clock and see what happens. And only now is Gunther Steiner realizing that maybe that might not be the most reliable way of running a Formula One team and that they might have to think outside of the box. But then you also see that he's basically relying on outside factors to try and better their own value and <laughs> admitting that they are a little bit self-centered, that they hope Ferrari can fix their problems. Well, um, there are plenty of other problems, matey boy. It wasn't always like this. In fact, from the team's inception in 2014 up until a few years ago, the entire operation looked quite impressive for what it was. When Gene Haas first mooted the idea of being the first wholly owned American team in F1 for decades, instead of just rushing things in, much like the failed Lola campaign thanks to MasterCard, this was a very softly, softly approach and it did pay off initially. Especially since good old Bernie mooted that Haas might have to spend about a billion dollars or so just to be competitive. So with that word of warning, Gene Haas managed to keep costs down and in fact, the UK operations of Haas, their startup costs were apparently only about $14 million. $14 million in Formula 1, that is not bad. That is really, really scrimping and saving. They came into F1 at a really good time when failed operations were coming around and personnel were looking for jobs. And of course, the failed catering bids, Marussia, they were shaving things off. Yeah, in fact, the UK arm, a Haas team, just bought up the Marussia premises and they managed to pilfer off quite a lot of catering and Marussia staff themselves. Pick up the pieces from other failed F1 bids and make sure that your own one was cost effective. Them learning the mistakes of what happened with the likes of Hispania, Virgin and Lotus. Don't be too harsh with those three teams, thinking that they were terrible. They were sold a dream, which quickly turned into a nightmare. In 2009, they had mere months to set things up in the wake of the cost cap that they were promised being completely torn away from them after all of the big F1 teams in 2009 were threatening to break away into another completely different motorsport league. They didn't like the idea of a cost cap, and so they threw their toys out of the pram, with these three teams being the major casualties. They thought they could go racing for $40 million, something of which of course USF1 and Gene Haas would love to try and do. But they couldn't do that, but they had the money and then he couldn't get much more money, and then uh, six seconds off the pace, so uh, not their fault. But Haas were able to learn from those mistakes, and they kept costs as low as possible, and it did pay off for a good long while. I mean, sure, Haas weren't going to be winning any time soon, but in the wake of those three teams, people would hope that they could at least qualify within 107%. But they were able to do that. They were Haas in that first season, not that bad at all. Romain Grosjean really setting the bar quite high, scoring all of their points, nearly 30 points in their debut season. They got sixth place in their first race. That was really, really good considering that most of the components of that team were bought out instead of being made in-house, something that Williams up until recently prided themselves upon, making sure that every single nut and bolt, every single breath of air from those air guns that go into making the car was made by Williams themselves. They had to make everything. Them, of course, as we all know, in 2018, which got Gunther Steiner into a household name in F1, they got fifth place in the constructors, which was remarkable. The original mission for Gene House was going by swimmingly, basically just promoting his own company, Haas Automation. They were making Big Bank. They looked like a really competent outfit. But then things changed, as we all know, when Rich Energy stepped in. And it probably ruined the team forever, or at least up until right now. When Rich Energy came along, everything changed. Gone was the original remit of Gene Haas, like I said, to just basically promote their own automation company in their CNC division, and then one day maybe try and expand to the Chinese market, which was ever growing in Formula One. But then considering we've not actually raced in China since 2019, that dream has sort of gone to the wayside. It's really not happened. But in 2019, the focus did change from Gene's team selling Gene's company into being a billboard for the highest bidder. 
After the success of 2018 when they could get 5th place, I could imagine that Gene House was looking for a way to try and make some of the money back that he had poured into the operation, and thusly looked to whoever was willing to give them loads of cash, and Rich Energy seemingly had loads of it, and he was an eccentric name, they had that livery, which tries to hop back to Lotus, even though Lotus had nothing to do with it, and now thanks to the Rich Energy situation, that livery design has been completely ruined. And well, you know what happened with Rich Energy, and then your alkali, and then hopefully not MoneyGram, but fortunately they seem quite stable and most importantly, an American brand. But the narrative that Gene Haas was prepared to sell itself to the devil on two occasions does pretty much tell you his situation and stance with the team itself. He has done seemingly all that he really wanted to do in promoting the Haas brand, and now he's quite willing to sell off the naming rights to the team and billboard space on his cars just to try and make some cash back and make sure that they can actually run profitably or at least maintain themselves without too much of him spending more of his own money. But by doing this, it's courted controversy, which ended in both times the team having to make a very hasty pullout due to external factors and them probably losing a lot of money in the process. Not to mention having these two big business people outside of their own control probably spouting off on social media, and since you're one of their major billboards, you get some of the flack as well, so you have to deal with damage control on your own end. <laughs> Remember what happened in 2019 and 2022? Yeah, there are a lot of fires that they had to pull out which they didn't really cause, and thusly it harms their own image. So from that first time around, you just got the impression that Haas was wounded, especially since 2019 wasn't a good year for them at all. You may get the feeling that Gene was looking for a way out if the price was right, and supposedly Michael Andretti did come a-knocking, sorry, calling, I mean gotta keep it on brand here, Gene Haas does like a telephone call. In 2022, Andretti told the race that he had been consistently reaching out to Haas since 2020 in regards to possibly buying the team from him, but was consistently told no. Gene not interested in selling, supposedly. Most likely thinking that maybe this wasn't the right time to sell just yet. And that did prove to be right, because since 2020, the value of F1 teams has grown stratospherically. Remember when Doralton Capital bought Williams for about nearly $200 million? Well, considering that Williams is probably worth four times that now, Doralton made the right bid at the right time. So maybe Gene Haas was just thinking, let's just wait. I'm not quite ready to sell yet. Especially when you find out that Haas is now valued about $780 million or so. And considering that Gene is supposedly worth a quarter of a billion dollars, now isn't a bad time to think about selling. But then at the same time, you get Haas as one of the biggest opponents to Andretti joining Formula One, them constantly dogpiling on Andretti, and that their bid is going against the spirit of Formula One. And maybe the reason why Haas are the most vocal against Andretti joining Formula One is that they had been the ones that had fended off the most bids from Andretti trying to buy out the team. Come on. It's only worth three quarters of a billion dollars. That's chump change in comparison to even the likes of Alpine. They're going to constantly go for Haas because it's a small team. Haas look vulnerable and therefore Andretti, of course they would go to him. And especially it's a little bit of a scalp since they are quite familiar with each other in American motorsport. Maybe this might be the right time for Gene to sell because this is the peak of F1's social media presence and reportedly in 2023, his presence on social media did dwindle quite considerably in the wake of the Red Bull domination. Maybe perhaps the valuation of Formula One teams might start to go downwards and tick lower and lower and lower. Something I think keeps Toto Wolf up at night. You just get the feeling that the team is simply treading water and just making the most of a period of stability that they've not really had since 2018 when times were good. And their brand message was thoroughly uncomplicated or tainted by the likes of stardom. Because 2018, we didn't have Drive to Survive. We only got that at the beginning of the 2019 season, which then made a star of their team principal, Gunther Steiner. Yes, now we're going to get to him. Now, when he came into the Haas role, he had not been a team principal of sorts for a good 15 years or so. Having started off at Jaguar and then continued briefly with Red Bull before moving to America, but then nearly a whole decade of nothing to do with Formula One. He did set up a composites company in America, and then was involved in the failed USF1 bid again, trying to source some things out, and then started to connect a little bit more with Gene Haas, maybe insisting that they try their own team bid instead of working with a failed one. And let's also be fair here, Gunther Steiner was not just sitting around waiting for a paycheck, he did do a lot of the heavy lifting when it came to setting up Gene Haas's idea of building a Formula One team. He got the Ferrari and Dallara deals with Haas off of the ground, Autosport describing him as the 
prime doer. So without Gunther Steiner's influence and involvement, the Haas bid and the entry as we know it may not have happened. So we do have a lot to thank in terms of Gunther Steiner's involvement in Formula 1, especially his initial involvement with Red Bull in getting them off of the ground. But it didn't last long, with Dietrich Mateschitz maybe suggesting that he go off to help support the NASCAR campaign of Team Red Bull for a couple of years or so. And reportedly Steiner viewed the acquisition of Adrian Newey into the Red Bull fold as something that meant that things were getting a little bit overcrowded with the F1 team and so he decided to try something else. But that's not how Christian Horner sees it, with him reporting that sure, Gunther Steiner was a good character and certainly memorable, but in terms of a technical leader, he was not one of those, which is why Adrian Newey was someone that he viewed as a person of interest. So already you get the impression that Christian Horner was like, yeah, no, he, he's not a good technical leader, which is quite telling about the situation with Haas currently. Their technical situation ain't great, especially with their upgrade path being rather pitiful. But then ironically, Gunther Steiner's view about the saving magic bullet that could be the source of Haas's future prosperity is Adrian Newey. The irony is not lost on me. The guy who took his job essentially at Red Bull. Hmm. And yes, he did a very good job in getting things off of the ground and making sure the right people were there at the time when Haas was a brand new team. That is something to really be credited for, that Gunther Steiner did know how to manage people and make sure that things were cost effective. That is a really good team principle to have at the beginning of an F1 team's campaign. Keep it lean and cheap and efficient and very, very stealthy and quick to adapt, which is why they had a really good first couple of seasons. But then 2019 came along when the mission statement from Gene Haas changed completely, coming to the fact that they really needed to make money and he wanted to get a return on his investment. And thusly, the direction changed and I don't think Gunther Steiner was really able to adapt. It seriously affected the efficacy of his operations and then 2020 nearly threw many teams into the cemetery, not just Haas. But since then, I just get the feeling that Haas are just coasting now. They're sort of making the most of the fact that 2023 has been relatively uncomplicated with sponsors or chicanery or anything like that. The only sort of negativity they've got at the moment is that because of them, the right to review has been shortened to 96 hours because they decided to be really cheeky on the justification that they wanted to make sure they had plenty of evidence and submitted a right to review in Austin at the very last minute regarding track limits, which ultimately failed. And then the FIA had to change their rules to make sure that people didn't just wait to the last minute and completely change results weeks after it had happened. Administratively, that would have been rather tiring. And then you've got the situation with their whole tyre situation. This has been something that has dogged them for many, many years. Since 2019, in fact. You heard on the radio all of the time that K-Mag and Grosjean were complaining about how their car was simply no good. That led to the legendary door smashing meme. And it's a problem they've still not fixed. You just get the feeling that Gunther has no answer to the problem, as he was stunned by the lack of performance from the 2023 car, how the B-Spec car didn't work, and now he's leaning some of the onus onto Ferrari, since he's hopeful that Ferrari's improvement in 2024 with their Projecto 676 design and power unit changes might trickle down to them since they are increasingly becoming the Ferrari B team, as Sauber's transforming into Audi. That Ferrari connection did get them off the ground to begin with, which is something to be fair. But it's becoming increasingly, increasingly more Ferrari's responsibility that Haas does well. Because if they don't do well, then Haas can just go, well, it's not our fault. Ferrari didn't provide us a good power unit and supplies. Because 2020, that was a good example of that. 2020, all of the Ferrari powered teams suffered to some extent. Maybe not so much as Ferrari themselves, because there were quite a few times that season, Alfa Romeos were overtaking for position the Ferrari team themselves. So at least Alpha and Haas were able to counter it to some extent. It's becoming clearer and clearer that Haas are now just not taking the blame or responsibility for their own failings and then just positioning it to Ferrari who are dealing with their own problems and trying to bend off the likes of Mercedes and go after Red Bull and also stop McLaren from overtaking them on the surprise in the fly. They've already got their own problems. They don't need Haas just going, please Ferrari, help us out, please. We'll put in Ollie Behrman, promise. We're good with rookies now. We learned from Big Schumacher. All of this leaning on Italy is losing more and more of the reputation that it originally had of being a fully owned American team. It's slowly becoming diluted that it's got a UK base. It's got a tool shed now at Maranello. It's becoming more and more Italian, which is understandable considering that Gunther Steiner is Italian even though he does also hold an American passport, which makes things all the more complicated since his accent is mostly German. And one thing that's become very, very clear with my audience and something I've really found quite fascinating is that Americans, most Americans, like 
winners. They like go-getters. They like people that like a good fight. They provide a good challenge. Get up and go. When was the last time that Hass was pretty consistent? Well, that was 2018. And then arguably the first half of 2022. Back when Kevin Magnussen got that fifth place in Bahrain, then that pole in Brazil, there were moments to be proud of the American team, even though it's got the Italian connections. But in 2023, they didn't have that. They're just flapping around and going, in terms of improvements, we have no improvements. That must be galling for any fans out there. To all the Haas fans out there, I feel your pain. This is basically what McLaren were like in 2018. They were having an existential crisis, not having any clue as to why their car was bad. They blamed Honda, but then they couldn't blame Honda anymore. And then they had to go, oh, oh, it's our fault. Haas needs to change itself. And most importantly, get rid of Gunther Steiner. Sure, he's a great personality and he is responsible for keeping Haas away from the clutches of irrelevancy and obscurity altogether. Something which I think Sauber has sunken into the depths of. I feel like his time has passed right now. And for quite a few years, Haas have just been repeating the same season over and over and over again. They get into a rut. They don't know how to counter any of the weaknesses and flaws that their car has. They try and upgrade in one big gesture instead of little and often. And then it doesn't work. They go, well, I, I don't know what's happening. Uh, Ferrari, can you just give us a hand, please? Yeah, it'd be great. Th thanks. Yes, of course, teams rely on bigger teams. They get components from the bigger teams, especially after what we've seen with Alpha Tauri and Red Bull bonding more and more and more, and Red Bull trying to project itself as a manufacturer team, doing what the likes of Mercedes and Ferrari do. But you just get the feeling that Haas is doing this a little bit too much and just calling for help more and more and not really trying to think with initiative themselves. It's time the team has a brand new leader to steer the ship and provide some fresh thinking. It's clear that Haas values Steiner and are willing to work for him and do what he says. He's got the team by the balls. Doesn't seem to be any issues with loyalty, but that itself might be a problem. If Steiner doesn't have any direction, the rest of the team aren't really going to question him because they think that what he's doing is seemingly good enough. They are cutting costs. They are being quite efficient in where they are. They can't really blame a lack of money anymore because for the first time this season, they were running at the top level of the cost cap. They had a full budget like everyone else and they didn't know what to do with it. And that is a problem. If you don't know what to do with that $135 million, then what's the point of having $135 million? Yes, of course, the Marinello department is slowly becoming more and more relevant in the Haas organization, providing more upgrades of their own to get Delara to make. And that means they're thinking inside the box and thinking in house for once, but it doesn't really seem to be kicking on as fast as they would like. And considering that F1 is still really, really popular, and there are loads of external investors looking to buy into teams, even with some minor investments and partial stakes, you get the feeling that Haas really needs to sort of rely on outside factors more that are also not the likes of Rich Energy or Euralkali. They've got to have some actual clout. They need to be capital firms that know how to deal with sports organizations. Williams have done it. Alpine has done it. I mean, McLaren's now being bought out by the Kingdom of Bahrain. Maybe Haas needs to do that. So that means Gene doesn't have to take all of the responsibility because he is trying to sell the team in terms of being a billboard. And right now, MoneyGram, that's providing a cool 20 mil, but it could be a little bit more. And they should not be afraid of doing that because F1 is popular. They need to survive. But considering we've got the likes of Fred Vasseur at Ferrari, keen to change things up and try and get Ferrari out of a rut, maybe Haas need to do the same. Provide themselves as a brand new team principal. Or if not, just cut their losses and sell to Andretti and make a big bank on their return in their initial investment. But I don't think they'll do that, though. There's too much pride going on here and a lot of backstory. But they've got to do something. They've got to try and keep their team on board and their driver suite, which is what I think they were doing with their right to review in Austin, trying to keep Nico Hulkenberg on side since he is clamoring to move somewhere else in the background. So go and watch this video next to get a little bit more of the scoop on that.